Okay, so let's get into it. Today's workshop is all about winning clients, right? So we're all about uh, getting clients. Um, and we're going to talk about how to grow your business by getting more clients. I'm going to give you four ways to get more clients today. Um, it would be really lovely if I knew a few of the businesses that are in the room. So um, I would love to invite you just to let me know in the chat, what kind of business do you have? Um, and are you already up and running or are you still in startup mode? Um, so that would give me a really good help for me to sort of um, create some nuances and just to make sure that everyone gets looked after uh, today. So coaching business in startup, social media marketing business, copywriting, insurance and finance, software development agency in startup, law firm, fantastic translation company, um, coaching and process automation. Oh, fantastic. Um Management consulting, meal prep, fantastic. Student architecture firm, uh, yoga and mindfulness business, excellent. Okay, so we've got a really good range of businesses here. Okay, so let's jump in. Let's talk about uh, generating more clients. So a little bit of my background. Um, many of you might have seen the Ali Abdal um, interview that we did. So um, that probably gives you plenty of background. But if you happen to have not been one of the two million people who saw that episode. Um, it just uh, basic, basically, my background is entrepreneurship. I've been growing companies for the last 20 years. I've built seven different startups over the last 20 years. I've built multiple businesses um, that have gone over 10 million in valuation. Um, and I've built multiple uh, six, seven businesses that have gone up to a million of revenue in their first 12 months. Um, so lots of fast growth. Um, currently, as it currently stands, I've got a group of companies. There's seven businesses in the group. Um, ranging from publishing and media and technology and training. So we've got a, a good diverse group of um, businesses. We've got an international sales team that we work with. We've got a, a really great marketing team that we work with. So what I'm doing is I'm sharing some of the things that we've used in the last year and also some of the things that have just been working for 20 years um, to generate uh, new clients. And I want to share with you four key ideas that I think are really good. And I'm going to show you exactly how you can set this stuff up really, really easy um, to get yourself some more clients. Uh, okay, so let me get my slides. All righty. <clears throat> so if you want to, you can follow me on LinkedIn. If you want to use that QR code, I can also post a link um, a little bit later on. If you want to stay connected on LinkedIn, feel free to do that. Um, if you want to check out any of my books, there's four books in the series of the entrepreneur uh, journey, which talks you through starting and scaling uh, a business. Um, and today's session is brought to you by Score App, um, which is the software that I'm going to use today to set up some of these marketing campaigns as well. Um, and if you enjoyed today, <clears throat> feel free to leave a comment on either of the episodes with Ali and uh, or message Ali on social media and just say that you enjoyed the, uh, the session because he's been the one who's uh, invited me to put this on. Um, so it's really lovely of him to, um, to, to give me that platform uh, again and again. Okay, so let's talk about getting more clients. I want to start with a bit of background information that is really important when we think about getting clients. The first thing is economics 101 is demand and supply tension sets the price. So this is a really important concept. A lot of people don't even start with the basics, but microeconomics says demand and supply set the price. So when you have high demand for something and low supply, obviously the price goes up and the profitability goes up as well. Now, what most people do when they start a business is they think a lot about supply. They think about what they're going to be doing, how they're going to be doing it. They're going to think about um, how they're going to look after customers. They, you know, they start a business thinking about what they want to do, which is the supply side, and they don't think enough about how they're going to generate demand for what they do. They don't think about how they're going to win those customers. I have a little saying which I would love to share with you, which is in order to do the work that you love, you have to win the work that you love. So you have to get just as good at winning the work as you are at, um, uh, at doing the work. So think about this. When we're thinking about demand and supply, consider something like an airline. An airline really should be profitable because it's such a risky business and you have to have so much capital and such perfect safety and you have to have all this customer service and it should be profitable. But even at the best of times, an airline is either making 5 to 10% profit and even in normal times, plenty of airlines are losing money, even though they're spending all this money and building an airline and um, it's such a valuable service. 
And then you have a look at a business like Rolex and Rolex is a business that hasn't really innovated in 50 years <clears throat> and it doesn't have great customer service but they have a waiting list of people who want to buy a Rolex. And in order to buy a Rolex, you have to go on a waiting list that can take as much as 18 months to get your hands on a Rolex. So the difference between a Rolex and an airline is that airlines have to fly those planes every single day anyway. So they're always trying to get people to buy those tickets as much as they possibly can. They've got this supply that just keeps ticking. Rolex have constrained the supply and they're really good at generating demand through their brand. And they have a, what's called demand and supply tension. So I want you to keep that idea in mind as we talk today about this idea that your business must get good at generating demand and supply tension. And the perfect example of demand and supply tension is even one step beyond that, which is called transparency of demand and supply tension. So transparency of demand and supply tension is where customers can see that there are other customers. They can actually see that you are in demand. So imagine you're at the local uh, park and there's one ice cream van, that's it. There's one ice cream van, it's a really hot day. All these people are queuing up. Imagine this person here saying, can I get a discount? And the person in the van would say, I'm sorry, have a look behind you. There's 50 people waiting to get an ice cream. We're not doing any discounts today. And because this person can see that there's lots of people queuing up to buy ice cream, they know that there's no chance of getting a discount. They know that that, that ice cream is gonna be full price um, because there's transparency of demand and supply. So this is a classic example where I'm pretty sure that they've had a profitable day uh, by being the only ice cream van on a hot day where everyone can see. Now, this is the opposite to what most people do. When most people want to win a client, they run around talking about the new thing that they do. So they're just running around shouting about you know, this new thing. It's like, I'm, I'm launching a life coaching business. Will you be my client? You know, I'm doing this new consulting business. Can you sign up as a client? So they're essentially out there talking about what they do, but the customer experience is that they sit there and go, hey, wait a second. I don't really see why I need to urgently respond to you because there's, you know, there's no real demand here. I'm, I've got the money. You've got something you want to sell. I'm going to take my time, right? So essentially there's not that lovely demand and supply tension there. So how do we get around this? How do we solve this problem? <clears throat> the way that we solve this is through signal collecting first and then making sales. So first we collect signals and then we collect sales. That's how we do it. Now, how does that look like? Or what does that look like? Well, here in the UK, every year we have this amazing festival called Glastonbury Festival, right? With all the biggest bands in the world, they come and play Glastonbury. But here's the interesting thing that they do at Glastonbury. You're not allowed to buy a ticket. So you can't buy a ticket. The only thing you can do for most of the year is you can register your interest in buying a ticket. So you go to their registration page and you say, I want to buy a ticket and I'm going to register my interest. And in order to do that, you have to upload a photo, you have to upload all this information about yourself, and that creates your registration. Now, once you've got a registration, that gives you access to the link to buy tickets when they're available. But the way it works is that they warn you that 700,000 people have registered their interest and there's only 130,000 tickets. So 600,000 people are going to miss out on tickets, right? So they make sure that you know that there is a demand and supply tension. And what happens? Well, the tickets sell out in about six minutes and people feel devastated that they missed out on those tickets. So every single year, Glastonbury sells their tickets because they know how to collect signals first and then sales. The signals are the registration of interest. The sales are only going to be made once they have demand and supply tension. So once they get enough signals, they know that they're going to sell out. So that's when they release the tickets and they sell out. So that's how the professionals do it. They don't try and sell stuff one at a time. They do signal collection first and then they do sales. So think about this, leads first and then clients. So first get lots of leads, then choose the clients you want to work with. My mentor, when I was 19 years old, he taught me a lesson that was everything is downstream from lead generation. He said, if you're good at what you do, if you're amazing at what you do, but you can't generate leads, you've got no business. He said, if you can generate leads, but you're not very good at what you do, but you can generate a lot of leads, you will fix all the problems with what you do. You will be able to solve problems if you can generate the leads. You will be able to improve the business eventually. So he says, everything is downstream from lead generation. As long as you can generate leads, you're in business. You will find a way to solve all the other problems. So today's workshop, we're going to talk about four ways to do signal collection. 
Um, I'm going to share with you the big four things that I've used over the last 20 years to generate lots and lots of leads uh, for the businesses that we launch. Okay, so let's get into it. You definitely want to write these down. You want a pen and paper so that we can get in and, um, and we can uh, use these. So way number one is called a waiting list and it's called launching a waiting list. So think about Elon Musk. What does Elon Musk do? He does not say there is a cyber truck available. He says in three years from now, we're going to have a cyber truck available. And he tells you, these are all the things that you should know about it. These are the price points and this is how fast it goes and all of those sorts of things. So he tells you a bit about what's coming. And then he says, if you're interested, you can join the waiting list by putting $100 down. And that was an incredible campaign because over a million people in the following week put down a Cybertruck reservation. They joined the waiting list by putting $100, $100 down. So over $100 million was deposited against those Cybertrucks. That allowed Elon to go to the banks, the big banks, investment banks, and say, we want the money to build the factories to be able to build these Cybertrucks because we have a million people on the waiting list. Now, if you've got a million people on the waiting list, you are in a position where, where people are going to jump around and scream for what you do, right? So you're in a good position to make your sales if you've got lots of people uh, on the waiting list. So the first one is a waiting list. Now, I want you to think about this. We are about 70 days away from 2024. And um, Rebecca, can you keep an eye on those? We're about um, 75 days away from 2024. Uh, you could do a 2024 waiting list right now or this side of Christmas. You could be launching a 2024 waiting list. So what would that look like? It would basically be where you say, uh, in 2024, I'm going to be launching management consulting services. If you're interested in that, join the waiting list. Or in 2024, I'm going to be helping people with their fitness. If you're interested in that, join the waiting list. Um, in 2024, I am going to be um, helping with IT security needs. If you're interested in improving your IT security next year, join the waiting list. Now, if you were to get 50 to 100 people on a waiting list and you only need five or six customers, imagine how powerful that feels. Imagine when you're talking to someone and you just casually say, oh, by the way, we had about 50 to 60 people put their name on the waiting list. We can only launch with about five or six clients. So I'm just calling through to find out who's the best fit, right? That totally turns the tables. It makes people go, wow, okay, I, I hope I get through as opposed to aren't you lucky that I might spend money with you? So this is super, super powerful to launch the waiting list. And twenty uh, in the lead up to a new year is a great time to be launching a waiting list. So what you want to do is not promote your business, pr but promote the waiting list for your business. Let me show you an example that I did recently. So I took, put this LinkedIn post up on my LinkedIn. Um, some friends of mine who I work with, they said, hey, we want to do an AI business for helping people to write their book. And I said, oh, look, I'm not sure that anyone wants to do that. And I'm not sure even I want to do it. I said, but hey, let's just launch a waiting list and see how people respond. So I put up here, I'm working on a project to develop AI tools for authors. These don't write the book for you, but they help structure the book and give you suggestions to improve content. If you're interested in using this tool or understanding the business model, join my waiting list. Now, this little diagram here, this took us about, I don't know, 45 minutes to design a few little screenshots. And we basically had this image. Now, what happened? When people clicked the link, they went across to this landing page and it told them a small amount of information, but it did say, if you're interested, join the waiting list. Now, what happened is a total of 749 people joined the waiting list, 1,200 people hit the website, 779 started the process, 749 finished the process, and we ended up with uh, a waiting list of about 750 people. Now, to join the waiting list, you had to answer some questions. And what we did is we were able to find out how much people were willing to pay, what kind of uh, problems they were trying to solve, um, all of those sorts of things. So we got lots of valuable information about um, how people feel about this particular product. So this is how we were building this to join the waiting list. So let me talk you through how you would do this, right? So waiting list templates. So we have a blueprint that we always use at ScoreUp and it's the same blueprint. I'll refer to it a few times. And the blueprint is pretty simple. You need a landing page 
so that people know what it is that they're joining a waiting list for and it explains things. Then you capture data and you get people to answer some questions. And then you give them their results where you actually tell people, yes, you're on the waiting list um, and you might give them some special content or you might give them some bonuses. And all of this is templated for you. So in ScoreUp, if you, if you have a ScoreUp account, these templates already exist um, where you can basically just simply set this up. All you have to do is change the words here. So join the waitlist and supercharge your fitness. Join the waitlist and supercharge your business. Join the waitlist and protect yourself from cybercrime. Join the waitlist if you wish to have uh, a yoga practice in 2024. Um, so whatever it is that you do, you just simply ask people to join the waitlist. Are you ready to get better results with your topic in 2024? Join the waiting list. And you can just change those images, um, drop in whatever images you want to put in, and essentially you're creating a waiting list. So I'm going to show you just how su super, super, super easy this is so that you don't feel like it's a difficult thing. So in my score app, I go create scorecard. I go pick a template. And at the moment, our most recent templates are the waiting list templates. So I'm just going to say, all right, I want to join the waitlist. So I go in here, I go use this template and it goes, boom, you've created that. Now I just go build. I click on the landing page and I just literally say, I might get rid of this because I don't have a logo. So I'll just get rid of that. I go join the waitlist and supercharge your marketing in 2024 um, get better results with your business in 2024 through high impact marketing campaigns All right so i can go there join the wait list um, i've got a nice image i can change that pretty easily if i want i can just go here free images marketing let's see what comes up and i'll just go boom that one's pretty cool so i'll go there and i'm not a fan i like this one there we go all right cool in the coming months we're launching a new approach to marketing <laughs> if you want access so get more of a good thing prevent a bad thing why this matters brands i've worked with about us, right? So I can change all of that, but pretty simple, right? I just edit it straight on the page. When I look at the questions, I can just go in here and say, what is your primary goal with marketing? Um, right, so I can edit those. How did you hear about us? On a scale of one to 10, how urgent is your need for better marketing? When it comes to your budget for marketing, what price point do you have in mind? Um, would you like to see an angel investor presentation for my new business? Is there anything else you want me to know, right? So super simple. I can just edit those. I can add a new one if I want to, and I'm, I'm ready to go. So essentially, I've just created a waiting list campaign. Now, as soon as I'm ready, uh, I can say, okay, I've got all of that. And I can just go, yep, publish. And as soon as I publish it, it's literally, it's ready to go. So I click on that link. And I've got my join the waiting list and supercharge your marketing in 2024. Oh, I forgot to save the image. But basically, boom, 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 it's all there. And it's collecting data, right? So super simple um, to create a waiting list campaign. It's already created a tweet um, and away we go. So very, very simple to create a campaign for join the waiting list. Um, all righty. Let me know in the chat. Do you feel that you could do that? Do you feel that that's comfortable for you? Have you got any questions about that? Um, and yes, you can link that to a personal domain. Um, now, if you don't have an audience yet, I'll, I'll come to audience building in a minute. But essentially, you do some cold outreach on um, Instagram. You do some cold outreach on um, on LinkedIn. Uh, you might do a joint venture with someone who's already already got a database, um, and uh, and away you go. Is it GDP uh, GDPR compatible? Yes, it is. It is absolutely that as well. Um, okay, so let's go and have a look at our next lead generation campaign. 
So our next lead generation campaign is a discussion group. So a discussion group. <clears throat> so this is called join the discussion group. So rather than promoting what you do, you first promote a discussion group. So for example, we've got a discussion group about using scorecards. And here's some discussion groups that I've seen uh, recently on Facebook. Um, some of them are from my clients. So the fertility breakthrough is from a fertility doctor that I know called Gabriella. Um, and she has 23,000 people who have joined her fertility discussion group. So that is quite amazing, right? She's got one of the top fertility discussion groups in the world. 23,000 people, seven posts a week from Gabriella. Have, um, and it tells you a bit about what that discussion group is about. And you just click join. And now she's got 23,000 leads of people who want to talk about fertility. Um, speaking English with confidence, a five-day challenge. The five-day getting leads in LinkedIn challenge. Five-day marathon peak performance challenge. So these are all great discussion groups. Another place to hold a discussion group, these ones are on Facebook. Another one is uh, on WhatsApp. So my friend Max, he wanted to connect with super, super, super wealthy people who run family offices. And a family office is essentially um, a business that manages one family's money uh, when that family typically has more than $100 million of net worth. So there's typically a small group of people who manage the money full time for those very, very wealthy families. So those family office managers are extremely hard to get to. And he decided he was going to put together a WhatsApp discussion group for family office managers to meet and discuss uh, family office related topics. Now, he had no background in family office, and he's ended up with a really amazing community uh, six months later of people who work in the family office industry. And literally within that group, there are billions and billions of dollars worth of investors um, who are in his little WhatsApp group. So what did he do? He just invited them to join the discussion. So here's what you might do. You might say WhatsApp group. I'm launching a WhatsApp group. It's how to achieve blank and it's a seven day breakthrough. Or I'm launching a discussion group on XYZ topic. It's going to be on WhatsApp. It's going to be on Facebook. Would you like to join? And you just basically invite people to join your discussion group. So super simple that you're going to just invite people to join the discussion group. I'm curious, what would you call your discussion group or what kind of discussion group might you do? Um, and which platform would you prefer? Would it be WhatsApp? Would it be Facebook? Um, would it be a different platform? So let me know in the chat, what would you do? How to achieve blank a seven day breakthrough? And let's have a look at some of these in the chat. Um, okay, there we go. Uh, there's possibility of creating Instagram groups for now. I haven't seen those, um, but I'm sure that's probably a thing and fantastic. Um, alrighty. WhatsApp group, how to build um, an accessory business in seven days. That's really, really cool. Um, so anyone interested in that would be able to join that. How to get your first copywriting client in seven days. Um, so if you want to join Kirsty's discussion group. Um, how do you feel about hosting a community platform like Circle instead? I don't mind Circle. The only thing with Facebook and WhatsApp is it's already on everybody's phone. Um, it's already, you know, pretty much most people have got access to it already. LinkedIn, you could do as well. I'm, I'm a really big fan of just starting with very low costs and starting with wherever people are right now, um, rather than asking people to set up on a new platform. Um, yeah, you could call it a discussion group. Um, or you can call it a challenge. Some people prefer a challenge. Some people prefer a discussion group. Um, either way is fine. I like to call them seven-day breakthroughs. I've got here um, a tool says how to con uh, conquer computer science, a 12-week breakthrough. To me, that's too long because remember, all we're trying to do is generate leads. We don't want people to feel like this is the whole product. Imagine you go to a restaurant and they hand you the menu and then they say, while you're looking at the menu, I'll give you a whole pizza just to have a nibble on while you're looking at the menu. And then you eat the pizza and you go, oh, I'm not hungry anymore. I'm not going to order anything off the menu. So the goal of these lead generators is not to make people feel like they don't have to order anything off the menu. The goal is to make them feel hungry for the food that's on the menu, right? So you're trying to make people turn up their desire to work with you. Um Okay, some good ones coming through in the chat. 
<clears throat> All righty, let's have a look at the next one. Discussion group templates. Once again, the landing page tells people what is this discussion group going to be about. Then it captures data and gets a little bit of information about them. Then it gives them the link to the discussion group. So the way to get the link through the discussion group is they have to go through that whole process. And then at the end, they get the link to get into the discussion group. So typically a landing page might look like this, get inspired about fitness, join the discussion. Um, recreation is a key ingredient for having blah, blah, blah. Until now that's blah, blah, blah. To join 200 plus busy professionals in London who are getting ready for a fitness transformation. So that is a really good lead generator. Um, for joining the discussion group. And essentially, as people go through, they answer the questions and then they get their results back there. Um, and those templates are just in that uh, software. Okay, lead generator number three is Zoom events. So you are on a Zoom event, right? Da -da, this, is, this is a Zoom event. So this is a great example of what you could do. The great thing with Zoom is very, very affordable to run pretty decent size events. I think you can have 50 to 100 people on the basic plan. I used to run physical events where we used to have to hire a venue. Basic venue hire was a thousand pounds. So every single time I wanted to run an event, I used to have to pay a thousand to 2000 pounds. Once we move across to Zoom events, super cheap, super easy. People can come in from anywhere. Um, it's, it's much less friction for everyone involved. Um, so you just put on a Zoom event. So rather than launching your whole business and telling people about what you do, start by launching a Zoom event. So you might say, I'm running a startup workshop, grow your startup and attract investors to make the world a better place, 90 minute workshop. Um, so here's a good idea for, an, for a concept, workshop, an introduction to blank, find out how to achieve result faster and safer than ever. I want you to think about what you would do to fill in those blanks. An introduction to blank. Find out how to achieve such and such result faster and safer than ever. So what might you do? So you might do, like for me, I might do an introduction to lead generation, learn how to achieve better marketing results faster and cheaper than ever, um, or faster and better than ever. All right, so I'm going to do that. So in the chat, I want you to complete that sentence. What would you do an introduction to? An introduction to blank? How to achieve an XYZ result better and faster than ever. Let's have a little look. <clears throat> um, Hattie says, is a Zoom event good for direct-to-consumer betting company? It might be a good idea to just get some customer feedback and to do some customer interaction. It wouldn't be, a, it wouldn't be too bad um, in the early days. A better example would be where you get people who are going to help sell this. So if I was launching a consumer orientated betting company, I would be doing an introduction to um, Instagram influencers making uh, sales of betting, uh, uh, betting stuff, right? So I'd be basically trying to get 20 Instagram influencers on a, on a Zoom call and I'd be showing them, we've got an amazing furniture or betting offer. Um, and if you promote it, you're going to earn some extra money and it's going to be really great. So I would do an introduction to becoming a referral partner for our betting business. Um, an introduction to communication skills. I love that one, Kashaf. Introduction to better blood pressure control. Interesting. Introduction to building a sustainable school culture. Nice one, Tom. Introduction to creativity. Find out how to achieve better social media posts faster and safer than ever. Uh, an introduction to LinkedIn coaching, find out how to get the most out of LinkedIn faster and more effectively than ever. Um, and uh, an intro to coding, how to read and write code faster than ever. Uh, an introduction to process automation, how to eliminate repetitive tasks and focus on what matters. I love that one, Nicholas. Uh, workshop, an introduction to mindfulness, how to thrive consistently and manage stress. Who wouldn't want to go to that one? An introduction to having a work-life balance in a stressful environment. Introduction to automotive uh, social media. Find out how to achieve organic growth faster without breaking the bank. Um, an introduction to freelance copywriting. Learn how to make five grand a month in 90 days or less, right? So that's a nice solid one that a lot of people would want to go to. Um, uh, Atul has asked the question, what makes a good versus a bad introduction statement? 
So a really good one is that you could walk into Starbucks anywhere in the world and just ask them, do you understand what I mean? All right. And anyone in a Starbucks would totally get what you mean. So if you said uh, an introduction to process automation, um, a lot of people go, mm, I'm not sure what that is all about. But if you said an introduction to running an efficient business, oh yeah, I kind of get what that is about. Um, if you said an introduction to, um, you know, Ayurvedic medicine, most people wouldn't understand. But if you said an introduction to natural health, uh, natural approaches to improving your health, most people would understand. So you kind of want to be able to walk into any Starbucks, tap someone on the shoulder, and they kind of already get what you're talking about. Um, and you want to try and say, by attending this, you're going to be able to do something better, faster, cheaper, safer, or with more emotional benefits. And you're going to remove a frustration, remove a pain, remove something that's expensive, remove something that is time consuming, remove something that uh, upsets you. Right, So you're looking for carrot and stick. So you're going to talk about you're going to get these things better, faster, cheaper, or more emotional, emotional benefits or safer. And you're going to remove these frustrations, pain points, um, costs, et cetera. Those are, the, those are the key elements that make a good, um, good approach. The next thing that is a really good thing to do is get into the habit of A versus B testing, where you come up with two or three examples and you show them to a few people and say, which one would you prefer to attend? Which one is more... Um, more of an eye-catchy presentation for you. So you're looking for ways to kind of test uh, and measure. I have seen, I've seen examples where people literally change the image on a landing page and get a 20% better uh, um, uplift in their results. I've seen um, where people change the color of the landing page and they get a better result. And I've certainly seen lots of examples where people change the headline and get a massively better result. So play around, do some A versus B testing on a Zoom workshop. Okay, so quick little recap. Uh, number one was promote the waiting list for 2024. Number two was promote the discussion group where people join the discussion group on WhatsApp or LinkedIn or, um, or Facebook. Uh, number three is promote the Zoom event um, where you do an online workshop. Um, now, once again, there's lots of workshop templates in, um, in Score App. So very simple. There's a really nice one here called Free Webinar Marketing for Your Small Business, a beginner's guide to this. You just have to edit this. So you just go through and just change whatever text you want, and it's already ready to go. It's up and running, right? So all of these templates, they include all of these key elements. So you just start with a template, and away you go. Now, bonus uh, that you can do is with a Zoom event, you can record it. And then you can chop it up and make it a special little um, on-demand replay. So you can basically take the event and turn it into a, uh, a video-based training. Once again, people have to opt in for it. They have to say that, yes, they want it. Then they register their interest and then they get it. So when you do a replay, you keep a very similar landing page. People still have to go through the registration process. And then you put the video on the back end so that people can watch that within the landing page there so that they watch it that they don't delete it they actually go ahead and watch it so super powerful little bonus replay um a little bonus is to do an event replay um okay the fourth one is by far and away my favorite it's a bit more complicated but it is the most effective one because it gets the most data and it gets really gets to the heart of why people buy it creates tension it creates desire and that is called a scorecard right uh, another word for a scorecard would be an assessment uh, an online assessment. So people take an assessment or they take a scorecard. Another word would be a quiz or a test. Um, so people love taking quizzes. They love taking tests. They love taking scorecards and assessments. These things are really, really powerful. So if you have a look at the NHS right now, um, they have a mental health quiz. Um, there are financial planners who are doing financial personality tests. Um, there's the five love languages. You start the quiz and it tells you which love language is your love language. Um, which is kind of interesting because you discover that all the gifts you were buying for your spouse mean nothing to them. They just wanted words of affection <laughs> all along. Um, so the, you, maybe you've seen this one. It's a 16 personalities test. This is a really good assessment. You take the assessment and it tells you whether you have a personality or not. There's 16 of them, right? So you can go through 800 million people have taken that. Really, really cool. So I've seen lots of these. 
Um, the pitch ready scorecard. Would you be ready to pitch an investor? Um, are you ready to sell your business? Right. So all of these scorecards and assessments, super powerful, right? I see literally we've got thousands of these and they're so, so powerful. The reason that we love these is because when people fill in this assessment, you get all the data on the back end. You can see exactly how they answered all the questions. So you get all this amazing data on the back end. So here's how you start thinking about this. Are you ready to blank? Answer 10 questions and find out. Are you ready to blank? Answer 10 questions and find out. Are you ready to have more peace and less stress? Answer 10 questions and find out. Uh, are you ready for a better work-life balance? Answer 10 questions and find out. Uh, are you ready to um, launch a copywriting business? Answer 10 questions and find out. So what I would like you to do is fill in the blank in the chat. What would you do if you were going to um, launch an assessment? Are you ready to blank? Answer 10 questions and find out. What would your assessment be? Uh, are you ready to empower your teachers? Um, answer 10 questions to find out. Are you ready to 10x your career? Answer 10 questions to find out. Uh, is your business ready to be more efficient? Um, are you ready to develop your team? Is your brand ready to go viral? I like that one. Are you ready to make five grand a month from copywriting? Um, are you ready to find out how to promote your products and services through Zoom calls? <laughs> um, uh, are you ready to book your photographer? Um, are you ready to learn to code? Are you ready to use uh, your... Uh, how to, uh, for a clothing business. Okay, Muhammad says how to use this for a clothing business. Um, probably not an assessment. You would have register your interest, join the wait list. Um, any of those ones would be would be good. Are you ready for an 11 plus? Uh, the other type of assessment, Muhammad, is which one are you? Which style are you? Um, which party dress uh, suits you best? Um, you know, which, uh, how would we describe your fashion sense? Any of those kind of things, would you like a recommendation for fashion that suits you? Ten, answer 10 questions and get a recommendation. So you might do it a little bit um, differently. Um, for your first leader, are you ready for a leadership role? Are you ready to grow your social media following? Are you ready to sell your house? Oh, I love that one. Uh, which cocktail are you? Answer 10 questions. Are you ready to find out your ideal career? Um, so there we go. Uh, is it better to position this as a positive change. I've found that both positive and negative can perform better and it's best to test. So are you better to are you ready to avoid something or are you ready to gain something? Uh, you need to test for your market which one is going to perform better. I really recommend um, trying both ways of saying it. So say it the positive way and say it the negative way. Um, okay, so let's talk about this. How do we do it? Once again, I just want to keep you thinking about this. Landing page tells people to start the data process, then gives them the answer on the back end. Now, the beauty of this one is that we actually let AI do the work with this one. So super, super powerful um, that, we can, um, that we can do this. Um, so let's actually build one using AI. I think you'll find this quite um, impressive and, and fast. So what do I do? I say, I want to create a new scorecard. And this time I want to use the AI setup wizard. So I'll get started and I want to generate leads and I want to use multiple scores. Okay, so how would you describe your business? I'm going to say I am a career advisor. And how would you describe your target audience? Professionals. What do you want to help your clients to improve, achieve, or prevent by using the scorecard? I want them to get a leadership role. Pick a concept for your scorecard. Unlock your leadership potential. Are you ready to lead? Take the first step towards a leadership role. I'll go with this. Are you ready to lead? Um, take the assessment. Next. So I'll say experience, skills, communication, motivation. Okay, I've got four categories there. So now I'm going to say, all right, let's get some questions. The AI is going to go ahead and write all the questions for me. Um, have you held a leadership role in your previous job? Have you managed a team of professionals in a work setting? 
Have you successfully let a project start to finish? Have you demonstrated ability? Um, have you mentored or coached colleagues? Let's go with those. Okay, next. Do you have experience? Uh, do you possess strong decision-making skills? Are you able to delegate tasks? Do you actively seek opportunities? Okay, great. So we've got some more questions. I can edit those questions if I want to. Super simple. Do you actively listen and engage? Uh, are you comfortable speaking in front of groups? Can you effectively convey complex ideas? Do you provide constructive feedback? Okay, boom. And then the motivation. Do you consistently set and achieve goals? Do you enjoy taking responsibilities? Are you able to inspire? Um, are you willing to put necessary time and effort? Okay, great. So now I've gone ahead. I've got 16 questions. And now I'm going to push a button. Now you've got to watch this real fast because it happens so quick. But watch this, ready? I'm going to push the button and watch what happens. If you're watching a different window right now, check this out. Um, okay, here we go. Hold tight, creating the scorecard. So it just wrote 1,192 words, 1,250. <laughs> it happened so fast. It wrote 1,255 words, saving eight and a half hours of writing time. So now I go to the dashboard. And in here, it's already started building my, um, my page. So it says here, here's what the AI built. So this is built by AI. Unlock your leadership potential. Take the assessment today. Answer 16 questions. We will send you a personalized report. So it's already selected an image. Um, discover if you have what it takes to lead effectively and excel in your career. Our quiz assesses your experience, skills, communication, and motivation, providing valuable feedback to help you secure a leadership role. Take the assessment now and embark on your leadership path. Right, AI wrote all of that. Once we actually go and have a look at the results page, all of this is written by AI. And depending on how people score, it shows experience and skills and communication, and it's got low, medium, and high. So if I look on that text there, I can see this is how it wrote it for low. If I then say, let's have a look at how it did it for high. Congratulations on your communication skills. Let's go medium. So all of that's already now nicely done. Now I'll just save that. And I'll say, okay, great. Let's go back to uh, here. I like it, so I'm just gonna publish it. Now here's what's really cool. I'm gonna put the link in the chat. And if a few of you can fill this in, you're going to see something pretty amazing here. So you don't have to use your real name and email, but you can just fill this in here. So yes, you can have more complicated responses, but it just takes a little bit of time. Um, you can ask it for content in different languages, or you can use a different translation app. But if you feel comfortable, go ahead and just click that link in the chat and fill in the scorecard because I want to show you what happens when people start filling in your scorecard, right? So go ahead and fill that in, or at least a few people uh, can do that. Um, and I'm going to go over to my dashboard. Okay, so 16 people have already started. I can see that 16 people have started the scorecard already. So that's good to know. 28 of you, <laughs> 28 of you hit the website. Um, so that's good to know. I'll refresh here, see if anyone's finished it just yet. Oh, started 24 people have started. Click through those questions nice and fast. Let's have a look. Oh, no one's finished, quick. Look at all those leads that are coming in there. Oh, I can see all those leads, fantastic. Um, so I've got lots of leads. And uh, Rebecca, can you fill it in? Have you uh, have you done that? Give me a thumbs up if you've done it. Um, Huddy. Oh, there we go. 10 people have finished. Yay. Okay. So here's what's really cool. First thing is I can have a look at how people are answering the questions. So look at this. I can see... Have you held a leadership role in your current or previous job? 27% said no, 73%. Yeah. Have you managed a team of professionals in a work setting? So look, I'm getting all this lovely data. If I want, I can click on this and I can use the AI to write a press release. So there we go about that data. So new quiz reveals surprising statistics about leading leadership roles. In today's rapidly evolving business landscape, the ability to lead and inspire others, blah, blah, blah. Are you ready to lead assessment? A staggering 71% of participants claim to have held a leadership role in their current or previous job. 
right? So it's writing a, a, a thing. I could get it to write a tweet. So we can just go, yep, let's write a tweet. So I can do that, or I can get it to write a, um, a blog post. So you can pick any of this data and it'll start writing about that data as well. Once I go into the leads, there's Rebecca's one. So I can see exactly how Rebecca answered all the questions. And I can say, oh, there we go. There's all Rebecca's answers. And I can also see it's found at Rebecca's photo on the internet. Um, and I can also see that um, uh, I can want to write an I want to write an email to Rebecca. So I'm going to write a sales email. And it says, congratulations, Rebecca, you're ready to lead. Um, Dear Rebecca, I hope this email finds you well. First of all, congratulations on your outstanding performance, your experience score of 100%. I was particularly impressed by this. So it writes a really nice sales email just for Rebecca. Um, super, super simple, right? Really nice. I can see where she came from. I can see her activity on the website. Um, all of that is nicely there. So now I've got, I've got leads. I've got data, I've got insights. So look how quickly that happened. We, within about five or six minutes, we created a concept, got AI to write it. We launched it, we made it go live and we collected 30 leads um, straight away. So super, super simple. Let me know, was that impressive? Like, was it pretty amazing to see an AI just go ahead and build a landing page, a data capture form, uh, dynamic results, all of that sort of stuff. Boom, it all just uh, it all just goes in. Um, it's all pretty cool. Um, so super, super simple for you to actually create one of these assessments. So you can just use the AI to create an assessment there. Um, all righty, 10 out of 10, that's what I like. Okay, but keep this in mind. <clears throat> AI does a lot of the work. But your job needs to be to ice the cake. So don't think that people are going to be impressed with an AI-generated scorecard. You do have to go and put your colors, your images, your stories, your uh, like about you. Um, put your personality onto the scorecard. Add your face to it. Add your bio to it. Um, really come along and ice the cake. So think of anything created by AI as being a bit like sponge cake. But it's your job to go ahead and ice the cake and make it uh, make it truly your own so that it's ready um, to go. So here we go. We've covered four things. We covered a wait list, a discussion group, a Zoom event with a, with a follow-up event um, or a recording. And then we talked about these online assessments. So those are four ways to generate really, really great um, scorecard campaigns. So you notice that we kept using score up. Um, that's because score app is built around this simple formula, landing page, data capture, quiz, and dynamic results. So all of the templates are already used um, in that way. The AI is built around that. So essentially it makes it super, super simple for you. When you're a score app client, you get a free copy of the book, which explains the whole strategy in detail and how to promote it. You also get a document called 29 ways to launch your lead magnet so that you've got lots and lots of ways to build your audience. Um, you get online workshops that we run every week called Set Up and Score so that you can get support and help with getting all set up. Um, and there's lots and lots of things like the online forums, the online courses that we run. Um, so it's all nicely available. So how much is Score App? So if you use things like lead pages, it's 29 a month. Typeform is 21 a month, plus supporting events and marketing courses and templates and all of that. So I guess you'd probably, you know, think about, you know, tens to hundreds per month. Um, the good news is, is that Score App starts out completely free. You can just create a free account and you can stay on a free account for as long as you like while you're testing and while you're getting ready. And then once you're ready to go up and start generating 100 leads a month, it's 24 pounds a month. There's no contracts. If you want to stop it at any time, you can stop it. It's Then it's uh, either 49 or 59 a month, depending on how you pay. Um, and then if you want to start generating thousands of leads, like 3,000 responses per month, it's as little as 82 pounds. So it's very, very cheap software. It does everything that you need from landing pages and data capture and all of those marketing functions all built into the platform ready to go. And there's four different ways to use Score App to generate lots and lots of leads. The good news is start with a free account 
um, and then just have a play, right? So it costs you nothing to sort of like start the process of having a play. If you use this code here, you're going to get a 50% discount of the first month when you upgrade. So if you want to upgrade um, to start generating more leads, um, rather than it being say 24 pounds a month, it might be uh, 12 pounds a month uh, when you upgrade. So if you want to take down that um, QR code, make sure that you um, you use that and that's going to give you a 50% discount on month one. Um, and also I might put that link for some of you. I'll put that link in the chat as well. Let me do that. Okay, so here's the thing. If you set one of these campaigns up, you'll have a ready-made marketing funnel. It's ready to go live in under an hour. So it doesn't take you a lot of time to do this. Um, you'll get a steady stream of qualified leads if it's working. Right? You've created something that's fun and free and available 24-7. Um, you'll get data-rich insights, so you'll start to better understand your marketplace. So those are a few of the key reasons why you want to set those up. Um, I want to reiterate the idea that everything's downstream from lead generation. If you can generate leads, you can fix every other problem after that. Every lead that you generate is an asset. Whether someone buys immediately or if they buy in six months or 12 months, every single lead that you have on the database is an asset. As your business grows... If ever you go along and you say, I want to sell the business, one of the first questions they'll ask you is how many leads have you got on the database? Because um, that's one of the primary assets. The other thing too is lead generation does change life. That sounds so cheesy, so corny, but it's really true. I've seen so many people where they're really, really good at what they do, but they're not generating any marketing results. And then they turn on the lead generation tap. They start generating 100 leads a month and suddenly everything starts to work. They go from miserable to happy. They go from frustrated to feeling good about their business. They go from having really skint resources to having plenty of resources. Um, so if you generate enough leads, everything, everything moves from there. Okay, so let's finish up with any questions. Any questions you've got, let's um, go for it. What we'll do is we'll, um, we'll uh, you can ask questions in the, in the chat or you can unmute. Uh, what happens if you have more than 3,000 responses? You can actually just buy additional credits um, if you have more than 3,000, but most people don't get 3,000 leads in a month. But if that does happen, you can message us um, and there's an in-app purchase where you can buy more leads if you want to. Um, can you export the leads to the CRM systems? Yes, you can. And also you can have that automatically happen. So rather than doing that um, you know, in a clunky way, you just go integrate, and there's all of these different um, CRM systems that you can just immediately integrate with. Um, and it will just talk to your CRM system straight away. And most CRM systems will also integrate with Zapier. Uh, so that is super simple right there. Um, there's lots of also good ways to share. There's 29 simple ways to share your lead magnet. There's um, uh, chats, pop-ups. Um, posts, it writes a new post every day. So you've got new marketing every day. So lots of stuff uh, in there. Um, can you integrate with Microsoft Dynamics? I don't think we do automatically, but through Zapier, yes. Um, best way to generate B2B leads um, would be an assessment. B2B leads, the best way I've ever found to generate really good warm leads is the assessment. Waiting lists are great as well, especially if you get people to um, answer five or six questions as they join the waiting list. Really, really powerful. Um, also, I'd love it if you let me know in the chat, what's been the key idea that you took from this session? What has been one of the best ideas that you got? Is it available for, in French? So on, on the back end, it's not in French, it's in English, but you can publish anything in French if you want. So plenty of people are creating scorecards in French or in all sorts of languages. Um, so we've got Japanese and Chinese scorecards, and we've got uh, people from, I think we have customers in about 40 countries around the world at the moment. So lots of different languages. The back end of our system is all in English, and we're going to be changing that next year. But the back end's in English, but you can publish in any language that you want. Um, can the domain to your website not be the score app domain? Yes, you absolutely can do that. You can change that in the back end. Um, what would you say uh, were the realizations you had five, 10, 15 years later, which you had hoped you knew earlier? Oh, that's a deep question. Okay, I'll 
that's not very a score up question. Uh, what realizations? Uh, well, there would be realizations about who I get into business with, um, and who you know how to structure the deals. Um, there'd be realizations about building a business for that becomes valuable. So um, one of the biggest realizations that I had um, later in business was uh, how to build a business that becomes valuable. Essentially, a business becomes valuable if it has recurring revenue, intellectual property, um, and a core team that is loyal to the business. And if you can build a core team, if you can build proprietary assets or intellectual property, and if you can build recurring revenue, you end up with a really, really great business. So I would always uh, suggest thinking about those things early. Having a mentor, really, really powerful. Having someone who's done it before. I really do feel like businesses, um, there's a lot of ways to fail and only a few ways to succeed. And you really want to make sure that you're working with someone who's built a successful business um, before. Uh, I would really recommend if you've never done this before, go and do six months working for a, a business that you really admire, that you think this business is amazing. Um, because you'll learn more in six money, months and you'll, uh, you know, and you'll um, uh, earn some money in that six months uh, as well. Um, okay, I've tried a few segmentation tools that haven't worked, but this looks excellent. Uh, I'm mostly interested in qualifying leads for paid products from large pool of students who take free courses. And this looks like it could do that well. Excellent. Cool. Some people are interested in understanding the results page and its capabilities. Okay, great. Let's talk about that. So the results page is awesome. So when we go into build, we can have a look at the results page. And here's some cool things that you can do with the results page. So if I want to, I can set up a special offer. Uh, I would call it, It's called a call to action. And I'm going to set up a special offer, but I only want this special offer to appear for audiences that are special officers. So I'm going to create a new audience and I'm going to call it special offer one. And I'm going to say it's for people who um, have you have you held a leadership role in your current or previous job? Now, if someone says no, right, then I'm going to give them a special offer. I'll save that. Now, this is only for people who said no to that question. And I'm going to say book a discovery session for first time leaders, All right? And it says, it says, because this is your first leadership role, we would like to invite you to a blah, 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 All right? So not a bra, 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 no, what? It says black bra, bra. I did not type that. I said, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> that was autocorrect. We'd like to invite you to a black bra, bra. Oh, hilarious. We'd like to invite you to blah, blah, blah. You get the idea, dot, 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 much safer. Um, so that special offer will only appear for people who said no to the, um, the have you held a leadership role in the past. So that's really cool. Um, one of the things that really makes an offer sing is if you add video. So you just go plus, plus video. So I'm going to put a video in here, but I don't want everyone to see that. So I'm just going to make, a, once again, I'm going to go audience and I'll go create a new audience. I'll go special offer to, oh God. Um, and I'll go choose conditions. This one's for, can you effectively, com uh, are you comfortable speaking in front of a large group? And if they say no to that, I will go, save and i'm going to make a video for people who are struggling to speak in front of large groups of people so um so i'll put put in there boom like that so you can see there's lots of great things you can do on the back end as well as that you can do pdfs so if you want to create a pdf you can send out a pdf report there's different templates there um, so so many great things you can do once you've got that data coming in um okay has that answered that Alrighty, we are right on time. If you need to leave, uh, feel free to leave. 
If you want to ask more questions, I'm happy to stick around for another 10 minutes if you want to ask more questions. And feel free to ask anything at all. Um, if you watched the Ali Abdal interview and you want to go off piece and ask any question, feel free to go and ask any questions. And feel free to do the reaction button. Put your hand up if you want to uh, ask your question um, in in not in the chat. Uh, Rebecca, have I missed any? Can you send people down different paths for different? You can have different landing pages, and soon we're going to have decision tree logic as well. Um, can you do calculations? We don't do calculators. Um, there are other ways to do calculators. We're really just focused on these online assessments. Um, are we doing the recording? We'll probably put the recording up in a week or two once we've edited it down and put the slides in and stuff like that. Um, but uh, they're, 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 keep an eye on the YouTube channel. Um, Rebecca, can you put the link to our YouTube channel, the Score App YouTube channel? Um, a few people saying thank you. Um, cool. <laughs> You've been listening to a few of these Ali Abdal. I've been blown away with the Ali Abdal thing. Do you know the Ali thing has had 900,000 views in one month? Isn't that insane? Like it's a two and a half hour it's a two and a half hour thing. By the way, if you haven't left a comment, please leave a comment on those videos. It really does make a big difference. And also, if you get a chance to let Ali know on any of his social media platforms that you enjoyed this workshop, Ali's always really sensitive about like what he shares with his audience. He really wants to know that people enjoy it and they, they get value from it. So if you get any chance at all to just let Ali know, maybe on his Twitter or his Instagram or his um, YouTube channel, that thank you know thanks for putting this on or um thanks for inviting daniel to do a live workshop um that would be great because it just lets ali know that it was of good value um okay great so everyone feels like it's doable uh excellent excellent all righty cool rebecca anything else um daniel the four books you've written entrepreneur playbooks from beginning to end. Yeah, let me quickly show you those. Um, the four books are Entrepreneur Revolution, Key Person of Influence, Oversubscribed and 24 Assets. And they're built along this pathway of starting a new business from concept to value, going from value to influence, going from influence to assets, and then going from building out the business with the assets. So it's as you scale up that business, um, all those books kind of help you at each new stage of the journey. Um, so those are the four books. Um, Bex, are you going to let me know if I've missed any? No, you've done great. <laughs> Fantastic. Very Forever good. the professional. <laughs> nice. Oh, uh, what does the three to seven years mean? It's typically that the three, you should be aiming to go through those stages in three to seven years. Um, so the goal is to accelerate your business faster through those stages, uh, not to take too long, especially in this fast changing world that we're in right now. Okay, thank you so much, guys. I, I hope you enjoyed that. Hope you got lots of value. I'd love for you to launch your campaign, your wait list, launch your um, assessment, uh, get out there, you know, get lots of leads, have a great successful business in 2024. Keep in touch with me on social media um, and go out there, have fun, be brave and make a big dent in the universe. And I'll see you soon. All the best.